Hi and welcome to this week's vlog. Um, this is going to be a bit of a stream of consciousness really and reflecting on the life of a friend of mine, an old childhood friend who passed away recently and what a crazy world we have created for ourselves. Now the view you just saw of the sea at the beginning of this video is the view that I'm sitting here looking out on and behind me is Butlins. I don't know how much of it you can see. All oh, right, you can see that there's that red sort of building behind me. That's part of it. And in, if you don't know what Butlins is, if you're not from the UK, it's a it's a holiday camp and there's all sorts of entertainment and music and things for kids crazy isn't it when you when you've got that the beach there that beautiful view but i i call it um call it dukkha land because people go there to um escape don't they escape their suffering really for a few days every year and um, that red building that i just showed you is actually a new building it's not finished yet and in there there's going to be um some kind of more entertainment stuff there's going to be like a laser tag quest game I think films another bar so I saw a sign saying they extend they want to extend the license or something so people can drunk get drunk forget their troubles so going back to my friend who passed recently she was a childhood friend I probably hadn't seen her for over 20 years but these days like we are with a lot of people we're, we're um we were connected on facebook and um and it turns out anyway that uh yeah i knew she died and then found out that she was actually an alcoholic really sad story um because on the outside she had a a successful career um she and that's why sort of Butlins is relevant. So there, there is a link there. I'm getting to that. And she worked uh, for Warner Brothers. And um, she was the chief buyer and worked on creating Harry Potter World. And I knew this because her brother posted a tribute to her in the Brentford Football Club fan forum. Because that's not far from... From where we grew up that was our local football team and she was a a big Brentford fan and uh yeah and it, it's like so on the outside you know looked like she had a had a very successful career and obviously went you know <laughs> I I suspect she was probably paid quite well as well earning a lot of money and then you know, but, but for her life to end that way at the age of 55, you know, no age. It's just, and it's affected me as well because you might have seen my recent video where I was talking about my son and he's been visiting me this weekend as well. And uh, my friend at the time, you know, not long before she died, her, her, li her liver gave up, that's why passed away in the end but um and when her brother was clearing out her house and found some receipts in the supermarket and she was buying seven bottles of wine a day and then having my son here at the weekend and seeing how much he's drinking he's going to a thing organized by cgl change grow live um which is called prehab and yeah look you can see a bit more of buttons there behind me that's that building behind and uh yeah to prepare them for rehab to make sure that they're ready so he's still drinking quite heavily and probably like four liters of cider a day and he's seeing the toll that it's taking on his body just makes me so sad and so I've just been reflecting really on what kind of a world have we created that people need to do these things that they, that they can't bear, 
their everyday life and you know and I I I think about my own situation um and I've shared before that I've had financial difficulties and part of that is because I couldn't I couldn't do a job I just couldn't you know I mean if if I'd have carried on teaching that could have been me you know I used to I mean I was never a heavy drinker don't get me wrong not saying I'm net I'm in a teetotaler but I was aware of my tendencies it's like oh I could have a glass oh I'll just have a glass of wine with my meal and then before I knew it you know I drunk the whole bottle but never more than one bottle in a night but even so it's not good <laughs> and so I stopped that you know so I'm not going to even put temptation my way in terms of alcohol there are other things sometimes like crisps and chocolate my downfall <laughs> open one of those big bags of crisps and you eat them all so it, it you know it can happen to anybody and it's it's right it's probably i don't believe there is anybody on this planet whose family isn't touched by addiction in in some way and what the expectations of society and part of you know I've shared before I've had challenges with my mental health and some of that was like because I'm I think it oh god I'm 60 now what have I done with my life I haven't had a successful career and that kind of thing and I'm thinking well if that if if I had you know I had been that way inclined and motivated to have a career that could have been me you know it could have just been easily the any of us about you know these ridiculous ideas we have about what success means and owning stuff earning a lot of money uh, a couple of my friends old school friends retired last year or the year before they took early retirement and at the time I was thinking, oh, aren't they lucky? They're retiring and they don't have to work and they're doing all this, going off and doing all this stuff. But then I thought, well, you know what? They've been doing a nine, working 40 hours a week, doing a nine to five job for the last 40 years. And I haven't done that since 2005 when I left full time teaching. Uh, it wasn't necessarily that I was consciously creating my life at that point, but I just knew of something in me that knew I couldn't carry on this way. It's like, no, I've got to get out of here in this classroom, looking out at the brick wall, doing the... We used to have a thing back then um in the uk called the national national numeracy strategy because i taught maths and every lesson was planned out <laughs> there was very little room for any creativity and it's like the pressure on the kids to keep up and and tick the boxes and all that stuff and it was just like oh god no i couldn't stand another year of that i didn't know what i was going to do i just handed my handed in my ask to reduce my hours the head teacher said no and I left <laughs> and then a couple of years well and partly as well because I wanted to start my own business and um, if I hadn't have done that I wouldn't have met people when I was out networking and learn who ran spiritual tours and then I learned how to meditate and around that time, my son was about 18. It was all kicking off. I knew this wasn't too normal teenage drinking. But there was something in me that kept going with the meditation that I knew that this is, that there was something in that that was the answer. <laughs> and um, at the time, because I was like trying to get my business going, I think, oh, this will help me have a successful business, you know, help me be more focused. So I'm doing that so you can see the view behind me because it's rather beautiful. 
Let's extend this. Well, I think that's just looks like it should go a bit further. Yeah. There we go. Oh, isn't that sky amazing behind me? Yeah, you see, we've got this here, and yet they want to be in Duckerland. Oh, you can see you if you look up. Oh, it's like when I move because the thing's tracking me. There you go, over my shoulder there, my left shoulder. You can see Duckerland. And um, well, what was I saying? Yeah, about learning to meditate. There was this. I suppose it's like there was there's that deep faith. I talked about that in a a bit in another video I made about gratitude, um, which kept me going through difficult times. And we live here in the UK, where really we've got everything we need, more than enough. We don't need half the stuff we've got. Um, we're better off than probably 90% of the people in the world. And... Yeah, it's still not enough, is it? There's always there's something missing. We're always looking for, some, for something more and we can't be happy with, with what we have. And so I noticed, well, notice I came to realise, I suppose, over the years that actually the point of the meditation was not to help me become more focused and all that stuff it just has practical tools to help me deal with life the problems will never go away there'll always be stuff happening there'll always be challenges but the meditation helps you become i suppose more resilient and able to deal with stuff when it arises and um, because that's what you do when you meditate you practice noticing your response to thoughts, to feelings, to emotions, and then you become more aware of when you're looking for an escape from those, whether that is through addictions, through alcohol, or <laughs> where was I? Yes, meditation just helps you to believe, 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 have faith, and to... Um, yeah, it gives you the tools, the resilience to deal with the challenges that, that come up in life, which are inevitable, because to be human is to suffer. But the, the only way we transform that is how we respond. And so there's, we're always, as humans, especially in this modern age, looking for something outside of us that's going to make us happy that holiday going to Butlins they're all trying to drown the feelings through food alcohol drugs tv sex relationships and there's nothing necessarily wrong with those things but it's apart from maybe the drugs and the alcohol but it's the way that we consume them it's like am i eating because i'm hungry or am i eating because there's something that i'm feeling that i don't want to feel and because it gets to that point when you realize or or not that that job the nice house the big salary it's not going to make you happy and so there's that still that something gnawing away inside of you and you don't know what it is so oh i'm gonna have a drink to just uh, um to cover it up and i talk about this with my son because i want to remove the shame around it because i don't know obviously you don't know what, what you know what was going through my, my friends how do you will never know but well, the part of that, she didn't reach out for help because she felt ashamed, she felt embarrassed. People knew how much that she was drinking and she couldn't cope. And I get that because I've been there myself. It was like I couldn't. Um, I got to the point where 
I couldn't carry on without asking for help. Um, if I felt like a failure. Oh, I should be able to do this. Because we, we become so isolated. I mean, when we were growing up, where we lived, there was a park at the back where we lived. And we were always out there playing, running in and out of each other's houses. You know, I'll come around, we'll get a drink or whatever. I'm going to stop here, see some people standing up there. And, um, but now we've all just become so disconnected. So I'll get that back on. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So, um, well, that was it really. Been talking for like 15 minutes or so. Been on a lovely little walk, sun setting, beautiful sky, beautiful sea. And when I just stand here and look out at the sea, I need anything else. Um, I'm off travelling soon. Last time I did a big trip was in 2018, so six years ago. And I was travelling for a month with just my laptop, a suitcase. I didn't miss any of my stuff at home. I'm going for longer this time. I'm going for three and a half months. And it, part of my dream would actually to become like location independent, to live like that permanently. But the thought of actually, so, I mean, I haven't got a huge amount of stuff because I did downsize a few years ago and got, got rid of a load of it then. But they're still like, oh, what would I do with it all? But I'd still manage, wouldn't I? <laughs> and, and, and there's the other thing, isn't there? When we hear this thing about, oh, I'm only living paycheck to paycheck. Well, so what? <laughs> you know, you obviously, you've got, if you've got enough money coming in in your paycheck, what's the problem I know there's that anxiety well if I can't work if I lose my job but how many people in the world aren't are living below subsistence level and they don't even have that level of security and and let's be honest how much could we save if we didn't um, buy so much stuff we could put away some money for those emergencies for rainy days Talking of rainy days, I'm just going to show you the sea because I love it when it's like this and you see the rain. Now yeah, you can see it raining out at sea. It's that beautiful. Yeah, so what else do we need? We're standing here listening to the sea, just lapping against the shore. And this evening, I've been doing it for the last two evenings, I'm going to light a candle for my lovely friend Claire and hope that wherever you are now, you're in a better place and just feel so sad that this um, world wasn't, wasn't enough for you. Yeah. Sorry. I'm going to cry. <laughs> anyway. I'll be back soon. I'll leave you with a view of the sea. In the meantime, take care. Go well. Lots of love.